Good morning, everyone. And uh, first and foremost, to all the first responders out there, thank you to everyone that has to come to work day in, day out to keep us moving. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, please continue to be safe out there and continue with social distancing. Sadly, we had uh, four more Omni County residents die from the virus last night. A male in the 70s, a female in her 80s, another female in her 90s, and a female, another female in her 80s. All with underlying health issues, but my heart and condolences goes out to the four families and to all the families this is, has, has happened to. Unfortunately, it's what uh, Dr. Will and I have talked about since day one when the testing stopped. Uh, we predicted our numbers would be, would have been like this two weeks ago, not, not the death rate, but the confirmed cases of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, with testing going forward, you will see our numbers continue to steadily go up because we are being aggressive compared to other counties and we're getting more testing out there. And that will help us open back up. But again, it goes back to the reality of what's going on around us. And yes, they had underlying health issues, um, but it's still, it's still tough. There's, it's still tough. Um, they're, they're our residents, they're our family, they're, they're part of, they're the backbone of our community. And uh, so my heart and prayers go out to the families and uh, to everyone that's going through this because times have changed. They have changed and we have to adapt to the new change in life. Uh, and we have to figure out how to reopen with all this going on, and that's what we've been working on. Um, but as of today, we have 937 positive cases. That's up 22 from yesterday. We have 812 people under mandatory quarantine. That's up nine from yesterday. And we have 35 people that are under precautionary. That's up three from yesterday. So again, um, Shaker Place, our nursing homes, the rates stay the same as yesterday, and uh, we have two workers now that are fully recovered back to work. So, uh, and uh, the same thing with the uh, completion of the quarantine that will be updated on the website, uh, but the numbers are the same. But we do now have <clears throat> 43 people hospitalized with a hospitalization rate of 4.59%. Those who have tested positive, it was at 4.04 yesterday. And uh, out of the breakdown, because someone asked that question yesterday, what's the breakdown? And uh, so the, the breakdown, we have one person under 25 that's in the hospital. We have three people between the ages of 25 and 49. And we have 23 people in the hospital that are the age group between 50 and 74. And we have 16 people over the age of 75. We have currently six adults uh, currently in the ICU, and that's down one from yesterday. So, and uh, again, we, we've been getting aggressive with tax, or getting the test out there and getting people tested. So, uh, you know, you're gonna again see them numbers uh, continue to go up. Uh, our partnership with Whitney Young, I can't thank them enough for what they've been doing. So for the mobile testing, please, as always, call to make your appointment, area code 518-465-4771. And, uh, you know, the other question we had yesterday was how many people got to test, and they, I thought we do put it out, and I know Dr. Whalen's team constantly updates that. And again, you gotta give us time, because they're very busy, uh, <laughs> very, very busy. So uh, they try to put that information up, but you gotta remember trying to get the numbers all the time is it's a little tough, because we have to get it from a lot of places, and Dr. Whalen can talk better about that than I can. But the 433 tests that were done, 357 tests at the Albany sites, like I said yesterday, 76 at the Water of Elite, um, and this week will be in Cohoes. Uh, 42 are positive, so it's a, a rate just under 10%. So just to let people know that are coming back positive at all the testing that we're doing for just the mobile. That's just the mobile testing. Um, and then we still have Rite Aid, so please keep that in mind. Rite Aid's going strong in Colony. Um, so thank you to everyone that helped me get the testing up in Rite Aid, but uh, they're doing a great job too. So um, you got to go to their website, RiteAid.com. We always put that up there. So people, please. Um, and remember, 
continue to uh, social distance and wear a mask. Oh, Dr. Whalen talk about that. There are some issues, and actually some people pointed out yesterday. So afterwards we had a picture, and someone had their mask on wrong. Um, so I'll, I'll let the good doctor talk about that. But there are protocols and procedures, how to wear a mask. Um, but again, please maintain your social distancing, uh, especially if you have friends or your family that have underlying health issues. Just be cautious. Be cautious. Don't go around. Remember, people, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, the world's changed. Take a deep breath and, uh, you know, continue just to practice the good procedures you have been. Uh, and, you know, our numbers, you know, are going to be our numbers. And we'll figure it out together. Uh, we'll figure it out as good New, York, New Yorkers working together. So, again, I want to say thank you to everyone. But, again, my condolences and prayers go out to the four new families. So, uh, Dr. Whalen. Thank you, Kenny. Executive McCoy. Can you hear me? Uh, so... We do continue to see our numbers increase, and we are particularly concerned about vulnerable populations, specifically in the nursing home. Over the weekend, we did uh, quite a lot of extensive investigation of cases and contacts. And I want to point out uh, something. You know, we, we tend to highlight how severe COVID-19 can be. But again, 80% of people have what is uh, classified as a mild illness, which could be mild viral syndrome or something like the flu. For these individuals, particularly individuals that are essential workers, it is so important for them to recognize the first signs of illness and to get tested and to stay home from work immediately. Yesterday, the CDC expanded uh, their list of symptoms for COVID-19, and I would like to read those so that people can be aware that it's not just fever, it's not just cough, and it's not just shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, which we have been talking about so much. But if you have any chills, if you have repeated shaking with chills, if you have muscle pain, if you have a headache, if you have sore throat, or a new loss of taste or smell. These may be signs of an early COVID-19 infection. If you work, particularly if you're working with the public or vulnerable populations, and you experience these symptoms, we recommend that you immediately stop working and get tested. A second point that I would like to make is for those who are tested for COVID-19. If you are tested, by definition, and the testing protocols that we are utilizing locally, you have symptoms. So do not be tested and go back to work. Get tested and go home until you have your result. You should stay at home until you know your result and not return to a work environment until you have received a negative test result and you are asymptomatic please don't hesitate to reach out to the health department to clarify any of these points. We really need to ensure that those that work with our vulnerable population aren't unintentionally spreading the disease. We know that in nursing homes and other settings, there are symptom checks on a daily basis, there are temperature checks on a daily basis, but we need the workers themselves to be more educated and more vigilant about these uh, minor symptoms that may indicate COVID-19. So I wanna get that message out and just reaffirm the importance. We're very lucky in Albany County that we have the ability to be tested if you have symptoms. The testing is there, please avail of it if you are experiencing symptoms. And again, please go home if you have been tested until you hear your test result. Uh, there were questions on numbers of people tested. Thus far in Albany County, there have been 9,060 residents that have been tested since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, this, to date, represents about, we, of those 9,060 residents, 10.5% are positive. I've discussed several times that this is a number that we follow. We're starting to see it go up a little bit from around the 7 percentile to the 10 percent of people being tested. We'll continue to follow that along. 
On uh, the 25th, which is the most recent date of update for the New York State COVID tracker, there were 402 patients or people tested, and of those, 49 were positive. So we are seeing you know, a slight increase in the amount of people that are testing that are turning positive, and we continue to follow that along. In terms of masks, yes, we've had a lot of questions on masks. So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about and show the, the best way to wear a surgical mask. And I'm, I'm gonna sh show that with my own mask. So if you have a mask, there are two sides to the mask. The mask usually has a colored side and a white side. The white side is always the increased side. So the colored side of the mask should face out. What you want to do when you take your mask is just to touch the uh, just to touch the strings on the side. Try not to uh, touch the mask because if you touch it with your hands that are not clean, you are contaminating your mask. So it's very important before handling or touching a mask to utilize hand sanitizer or to make sure your hands are appropriately washed. So once you've washed your hands, you pick up your mask, you take the ear um, pieces, and you put them over your ear. It is very important that you ensure there's coverage of your nose and your mouth. We see people out in the community walking around like this. This is not only not helping you, but you're contaminating your mask. Do not walk around like this. Make sure the nose is covered. So again, walking around like this is not helpful. If you look at the mask, you see that there's part that can bend. So this, there's a top and a bottom to the mask. And the top part of the mask has a little bit of, um, uh, I think it's aluminum in there that helps you bend the mask. And this is to help you conform to your nose. So this part of the mask should always be the top part of the mask. And when you put the mask on, what you want to do is pinch that part so that you get a good seal around your nose. This is also helpful for people who are wearing glasses so that you don't fog up your glasses. If you have this pinched, you have better infection control and you will not fog up your glasses. And again, you wanna make sure that the nose and the mouth are covered. So those are some pointers for wearing masks. Again, when you take a mask off, uh, you know it's important if you are going to be reusing a mask, not to put it on a surface that it could become contaminated on. So you may want to either bring uh, you know, a covering or uh, something to put this in to keep it clean if you are gonna utilize it again. If the mask becomes dirty, if the mask becomes wet, it is generally not suitable for a second use. So these are some pointers. I know that we have a video posted online that can also be helpful to others. And certainly, again, contact the health department if you have specific questions on masks. We're happy to provide additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Whalen. I appreciate that. In uh, another effort in our community from the Boys and Girls Club, uh, they are filling a void that in the community with these kids out of school, uh, looking for a hot meal or looking for lunch or just looking for breakfast, just looking for food in general. Uh, they have stepped up to the plate and, uh, and really have helped out in, in an area where we need to get food out to kids and we need to help them out, not just here in Albany County, but in the capital area. So I do want to say they've put out 60,000 mail so far through 12 locations in Albany and Troy. And, uh, you know, and they're doing about 2,100 2, mails a day on Monday through Thursday and double that amount on Friday to give kids uh, a, a meal for Saturday. So I do want to thank uh, Justin Ruder, Ruder, who is the CEO. I want to thank you for all you're doing and uh, have you talk about what you, the Boys and Girls Club's been doing throughout the area. Thank you, County Executive Thanks. McCoy. Uh, I'm happy to be here today representing the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Capital Area. Uh, first off, I want to thank you and Albany County for inviting me to speak today. There are so many organizations that are out there in our community doing great work to keep this uh, community functioning. So I applaud everyone for their courageous efforts, especially our frontline workers and our first responders that are out there every day. Uh, as we all know, these are extremely challenging times for many people. Many are unemployed and a lot of them are worrying about how they're going to feed their family. 
As soon as New York State made the decision to close schools, the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Capital Area knew that food access was going to be a very big challenge for many families in the Capital Region. When schools are open, our organization serves 1,100 hot meals every single day to after-school programs throughout the Capital Region. With the temporary closure of these programs, as well as schools, we knew we really had to act fast to ensure that youth did not go hungry. With that, the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Capital Area launched a mobile meal service program in 12 locations so we could bring food right to the front doors of families. The Boys and Girls Clubs of the Capital Area's efforts, as well as the efforts of our school districts and many other community partners, are ensuring that many youth and families do not go hungry. On our first day, we served 425 meals and are now up to serving 13,000 meals each week. As the county executive mentioned this past week, we served our 60,000th meal since the program launched. The need for food continues to grow as this pandemic continues on. In the beginning, our goal was to feed youth, but as we have seen, many adults are asking for food as well. The Boys and Girls Club of the Capital Area continues to look for creative ways to support as many families as possible through donations from the community, our corporate partners, as well as many volunteers that have stepped up each day to help us serve meals. People are really scared to leave their homes right now. Many are relying on public transportation to get to the grocery store. Additionally, a lot of these families reside in so-called food deserts. So imagine this, imagine traveling to a grocery store with your kids in tow, using public transportation, and expecting your children to utilize social distancing while in the grocery store. It is truly a scary thought for many. By providing healthy, hot, nutritious meals Monday through Saturday, we are doing our best to help fill that issue and fill the gap for those that truly need it. There has definitely been some challenging days outside battling the rain and the cold weather, but without these deliveries, children might go hungry. Our staff and volunteers have done whatever it takes to make sure that children are eating. Not only have we been delivering meals, but we are partnering with many other organizations to deliver um, program supplies and other materials with our meals. We partnered with RPI to deliver STEM kits. We delivered census information, books, and many other activities that families can do at home while schools are closed. In order to continue expanding our meal service, we are asking for support from the community. If you're interested in volunteering at any one of our mobile meal locations, you can call the Boys and Girls Club at 518-462-5528, or you can email meals at bgccapitalarea.org. And additionally, uh, if you'd like to make a financial contribution, every $3 that is donated equates to one meal being served in the community. Um, you can visit our website at bgccapitalarea.org. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you to Dan for having me up here today. Uh, we appreciate everything you're doing to keep the community and the citizens informed of how this pandemic is affecting us locally and nationally, and keep up the great work. Thank you, Justin, and thank you to what the Boys and Girls of the Capital Region are doing. Uh, we need you. I do want to remind people these mails that are provided for people that obviously uh, we're trying to help the laid off workers first and foremost, the uh, seniors that can't get out and people that, like Justin said, uh, the best that have to rely on trust, but our public transportation to uh, get to the, the supermarket. So Justin, thank you for everything that you're doing and uh, I can't thank you enough for helping us out in the community. And again, to the 36 families here in Albany County, our uh, heart and love and prayers go out to you and your family at this time of need and uh, we'll continue to be there for you.